Hey guys, Alex with Infotainment here. Today, we're gonna do something a little extra special. We've actually brought one of our customers in. She's got a minivan, she's a mother of two, and she's gonna show you just how easy it is to upgrade your non-CarPlay radio to the CarPlay radio in her Chrysler Pacifica. Hi guys, I'm Michelle. I've driven a lot of different cars, whether it be a rental car or a family member's car. And after getting out of their cars with CarPlay, I got into my car and felt like it was totally lacking that feature. Um, I did some research and found infotainment that they offered the upgrade to CarPlay. So we're gonna go ahead and show you how easy it is um, to install yourself. Now that we're in the vehicle, we'll go ahead and get started. First, I'll show you there's three main components to this. First, we have the screen. Second, we will have the module that sits behind the screen. And last, we will connect it and flash it with the OBD Genie. I'm gonna use this tool right here to help get the screen apart so that I don't break a nail. We'll just wedge this behind and loosen up the clips and then we'll go ahead and pull. And disconnect two cables behind the screen. There'll be a black connector and a white connector. You just kind of pry them off. Once you get the cables disconnected, the black cable will be reused, the white cable will be discarded and replaced. All right, now that we have the screen out of the vehicle, we're gonna go ahead and transfer the air vents to the new display. Um, there are four screws holding in each side of the air vents and I will remove them with this Allen wrench. All right, now that we've moved the vents over, we're gonna reattach them with the screws we took out. Make sure you put the screws in tight, but don't break them. All right, now that we're back in the vehicle and we've replaced the air vents, we're gonna go ahead and take out the module. There are four Phillips head screws right here that we're gonna go ahead and disconnect. Once we have those screws out, we'll go ahead and flip this down forward. Now that we've taken out those screws, you're just gonna pick this up and kind of tuck it underneath so that we can see the exposed wires and we'll go ahead and disconnect everything that is behind this. If you have trouble getting any of these out, a little screwdriver will help. All right, so now that we've got this taken out, we're gonna go ahead and put in the new one. The first thing you're gonna do is the cable that has the white and purple is the one we're gonna be replacing with the new cable. So we're just gonna go ahead and tuck them in so that they are not used. Depending on your vehicle, you may have different uh, connectors, so just whatever you have here, line up color coordinated.
All right, once you get all those connected, just go ahead and tuck this back in and we'll put back the screws. Now that we've got the screws back in here, we're gonna go ahead and reconnect our screen. Just gonna connect the black wire back here and the new white one. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and install the OBD Genie to program the radio. I've gone ahead and put my car into the on position and once that has been on for 10 or 15 seconds, we'll go ahead and install the Genie. Now that we've gone ahead and done the OBD Genie flash, I've come back into my vehicle. I've gone ahead and unlocked my phone and plugged it into my car using the USB cable. Now I have my phone screen on my car screen. Overall, the installation is pretty simple. Some of the connectors can be a little bit tricky, but go ahead and take your time and make sure those are done correctly. I'm really happy with the upgrade to the CarPlay and all of the features that come with that. Go ahead and check them out on infotainment.com. They have lots of different options for different vehicles. And thanks for watching.